In an area of Nairobi known as Little Mogadishu, a group of Somali rappers have decided to fight terrorism not with weapons but with music. <laughs> The 18 members of a group called Wayaha Kusub, which means New Era in Somali, have penned a protest song against the violence by militant group Al-Shabaab. I think for this song, and I create uh, to, to make reaction, uh, because uh, to tell the Somali community or Somali youth, uh, don't be follow the terrorism, don't be enjoy the terrorism, don't be kill anyone. The lyrics of the song try to explain to people that the Quran doesn't ask believers to kill non-believers as a way of reaching paradise. The band have been making music together since 2004. They also organize concerts both in Kenya and in Somalia to spread their message of peace through rap and hip hop. Actually they're receiving the message because there's a time we go to Somalia for a concert on March. Sorry, I said 400, it was 800 former Al-Shab kids, 800 kids. We performed for them, they were told, Skadafa, that was here, leave the violence. So we asked them, what do you think about us? They said that we think you are bad guys, but now we see you're good guys. We sing a life, you sing for us. This is what life, we don't want to join Al-Shab again, we just want to live straight like other people. But Wayaha Kusub are taking a risk in speaking out so publicly. All the band members have received threats, and Ali himself was shot outside his house. But despite this, they're determined to continue spreading the word of non-violence. We heard a series of gunshots. We called everyone to the corner, all the kids and the mums and the parents and everyone. And we said, get down, get down, get down on the floor. And just as we did that, <coughs> the gunmen tossed a grenade uh, to where we were. I was sitting with my daughter, and my wife was uh, doing some shopping upstairs. She had left us uh, just a couple minutes before and um, heard a loud explosion or blast followed by uh, some gunshots. Um, uh, all of a sudden, a wave of people um, started running um, back away from uh, the parking lot. And so I just sort of turned and, and ran back. Let's go upstairs. And we heard machine guns. And then uh, we started to run. And there was a second explosion which knocked us on the ground. The sound was loud and children, I, I believe they've never heard something that loud. So they started screaming and at the same time, um, the shots started coming in and I just watched because we were right near the wall. I saw something whiz by my son's head, just like that. And it bounced from the wall and hit the little boy over here who was standing next to him. I tried to, you know, put my hand there to stop bleeding. I don't know what I was doing. I don't know what I was doing. but. I couldn't save him. You could hear while we were back there, them methodically kind of going from store to store, talking to people, asking questions, shooting, screams, and then it would stop for a while and then they would go to another store. The guy with the white shirt spoke first and he said, um, we're from Somali and uh, we don't normally kill women yeah. and children but then again you've killed our women and children his yeah, colleague next to him thin tall skinny face black he, he just opened fire. fire i would say the scariest moment was when uh, some people started to leave about maybe an hour and a half into our time there and then i made it about halfway across the room all of a sudden a wave of people came came running back um, at that point, I had no idea if we had been discovered, if somebody knew where we were and was coming after us. Um, so that was, that was definitely the most, the most terrifying moment of those three hours when we were in that room.
we were helping everyone who got like shot or something because they were all bleeding. So we had our aprons, so we had to give it to them so they'd like stop bleeding. You can't sleep. It's, you know, you just remember things. And at least there was one point I just thought I had lost her. We have been trying to look for our dad uh, since Saturday. But today we found him, although he was dead. Can't say anything because we have nothing to do. Just forgive those guys who did that. And God do his work.